Hello everyone and welcome to my first Android deep dive where we'll be talking about how to understand API level. An API level is something that's quite complicated and often overlooked, but it's very important to understand how API level works because when you're developing Android applications, you want to associate your application with the correct API level so that you're targeting the correct devices when you decide to release your application. So in order to get started, I want to quickly cover what we're going to be going over in this session. I want to start with understanding how Eclipse will display the API level for you and how you can choose it using the Eclipse interface. And I want to transition to understanding what API level really is. And then I want to conclude with an example I have prepared for you where we're going to be working with API level in real time and trying to accommodate a broad spectrum of devices by programmatically working with API level. So let's get started now by going over a quick definition of what API level is. Now, if you go to developer.android.com, this is the definition that you're going to be presented with eventually. API level is an integer value that uniquely identifies the framework API revision offered by a version of the Android platform. Now, to simplify that, it's just a number that's more specific when describing the Android SDK than, say, Honeycomb or Jelly Bean. And it specifies every revision, even the revisions that aren't necessarily released to the public, so that we as programmers can know what functionality is going to be available on that specific API. So that's why we have API number. We need to really explicitly distinguish between those revisions. And now that we have a very basic understanding of what API level is, I want to jump into Eclipse so that we're able to illustrate how you're going to go about choosing the API level as you're making your application. And this is the Eclipse new project screen here. You get to this menu by going through the file menu in Eclipse and clicking on new Android application project. And it's where you specify the application name, the package name, and it's also where you specify the API levels of the SDKs that you want to use in your application. And we're going to be focusing on this for now. And the first drop-down menu is the one I want to focus on first, and that's the minimum SDK. What, what does that mean? And the, as the name implies, it is the absolute minimum SDK that your application is going to support. So the API level that you specify here will be the minimum API level that can be on a device if it's going to run your application. And actually the Google Play Store will filter applications away from users if they don't meet this minimum requirement. So for in this example, if a device had API 7 or lower, if, an, if a device itself was running API 7 or lower, it wouldn't even be able to see this application in the Google Play Store. And I believe right now about 95% of all Android devices are running API 8 or later. So having API 8 as a minimum is an industry standard. And there's really only specific cases where you'd want to target lower than that. But if you want to make a basic Android application and you want to target 95% of the of the uh, user base, specify Android API 8 here. Now this next SDK here, the target SDK, is a little more vague, harder to describe. However, it's essentially the value that represents the highest API level that you've tested your application on. If you select a value there, you're, you're just saying that you can guarantee that your application will work with that API level, but then you have to enforce that as a programmer. Now, considering the, the Android APIs are uh, backwards compatible, it's not really necessary to maximize this number to try and target more devices. Instead, you really just want to pick an API level here, which encompasses the most advanced portion of your application that you want to support. So, for example, if you wanted to use near-field communication, that's only available on API level, I believe, 14 or above. I might be wrong there. So you would specify API 14 as your target because you're intending to use NFC, but API level 8 wouldn't have the functionality of NFC, so you'd have to either omit it from those, from those devices programmatically, and we'll go over how to do this later, 
or implement some sort of workaround where we can hack together some sort of implementation of NFC which is going to emulate the same behavior on a device running a lower API level. And finally we have the compile with SDK here. Now the compile with SDK is actually just for Eclipse. That's how it, that's the library that Eclipse is going to use to compile your application, as the name implies. And this is useful because when we're trying to enforce the contract we defined with the application earlier that we're going to guarantee that API 18 will work, we can just make the compile with API level equal to the target API level. This ensures that as we're compiling in Eclipse, we don't use any API calls that are dependent on, API, on, on any APIs later than API 18, so that we know that it's going to run based on the target API that we specified. However, this won't remove any warnings that you get if you're using an API call from any API greater than 8, because we have to have our application run on API 8. You're going to get errors from Lint, which is Android's error parser. And you can actually suppress those errors, and you should suppress those errors, and handle the functionality differences programmatically. Again, we'll get into this later. Um, but the compile with SDK, or the compile with API level here, will enforce that you're only using API calls up to API 18. Now I want to take some time to illustrate some of the fringe cases that we're going to be working with when you're choosing what your minimum required target and compile SDK should be based on the API level of the devices that you're planning to target. So the first important scenario that we have to consider is when the API level of your device is lower than the minimum required SDK here. In that case, as I mentioned earlier, Google Play will actually filter the application you're developing from that device. Of course, they could install it without using Google Play. However, anytime an API call is made, which refers to a higher API level than that installed on the device, the application would crash and it'd be a horrible user experience. So quite a simple one to start out. But now we have the most complicated scenario of all the scenarios here. And that's when the API level of your device is somewhere between the minimum required SDK and the target SDK. In that scenario, you're going to have to handle the cases where you want to use an API call from an API which is higher than the API installed on the Android device itself. And that's because you, you've specified the target SDK as an SDK or API level, let's be consistent, that's higher than on the device. So you want to use API calls from a higher API, but those API calls aren't on the device that you're working with. So you have two options. Either hope that the API calls you're using are included in the support library, and you can just include the support library in your application and it will work as normal. Or you have to programmatically compensate for this discrepancy by emulating the functionality of the higher API call on the device with the lower API or just omitting the functionality specifically for any API less than the target, but still allowing that application to be installed on your device. So you don't really want to do this with the more critical functionalities of your application, but you'd, you'd probably want to do this with uh, kind of optional functionalities like using NFC to communicate data between devices if you're just sharing a file or something. Now this next scenario is one that we can actually avoid entirely by doing something clever with the way we set up the SDKs in Eclipse. And that scenario is where the API level on the device is higher than the target SDK but lower than the compile SDK. Now since the compile SDK is something specific to Eclipse, it's compiling your application based on the API you specify in that drop down menu. There's really no reason to have it any higher than the target SDK. So the way that you can easily remedy this situation to avoid it entirely and what I'm going to be doing throughout the remainder of these tutorials is just to move the compile SDK to align with the target SDK. 
That way you can enforce the guarantee you made earlier and make sure your application runs up into that target SDK and you just have backwards compatibility work for you for any API after that. So naturally the final scenario we have to work with is when the API level of your device is higher than your targets and compile SDKs. And in that case your application should work because of the natural backwards compatibility that the Android system offers. Sometimes the Android operating system might enforce some sort of com um, compatibility features to make sure that your application runs smoothly, but it's typically a case we don't have to worry about. So in summary, what should you do? When you're developing applications, what should you do to remedy and kind of triage any issues that you may run into with the SDKs? And I'm going to recommend that you pull the target SDK down until you have reached an API level that encompasses the most advanced functionality, the most advanced API call that your application requires to be functional. And then after that, we're going to want to pull the minimum SDK down as low as we can to a reasonable level. In our case, that reasonable level will be API 8, so we can cover 95% of all devices. And then you want the target SDK and the compile SDK to align. So we're going to make the compile SDK equal to the target SDK. And that's how you go about resolving these problems, and that's typically a best practice. And in our examples, if you want some numbers to work with, if you want to just pick some numbers to get started, I would recommend that we use API 8 as the minimum required, API 14 as target SDK, and, the, and API 14 again as the compile SDK. I now want to work through one final illustration which kind of describes the process flow when you're dealing with an Android device that has an API level somewhere between the minimum required SDK and the target SDK. So in that situation you have a few questions to ask yourself. First of all, are you using an API call from an API higher than the min SDK? Usually the answer to this question is yes, however if the answer is no, then the application will run normally and you don't have to do anything. So if the answer to the question is yes, we have a second question to ask ourselves. Is the method that describes the API call included in the Android support library? If the answer to that question is yes, then we simply include the support library in our application and it will run normally. However, if the answer to that question is no, this is where we have to reconcile those differences manually and programmatically to make sure that our application runs smoothly and correctly across a, the entire spectrum of API levels. In order to close out this deep dive here, I want to leave you with a live example of how you would actually make your application cross-compatible with multiple API levels. And to do that, we're going to jump into Eclipse, and as you can see in the lower right, I have three emulators running. One which has API 3, one which has API 8, and a final emulator running API 11. And I went ahead and created this application in advance for the sake of time, but let's start by first examining the Android manifest for the application. You'll see that my min SDK is 8, and my target SDK is 11. Now the compile with SDK you can find in the project properties by clicking on Android. Right now I have it also set to be API 11. And the first thing you'll likely notice is that there's an error in my application. So let me open up the source code. We'll scroll down to where the error is and it's with this set Y method. And that's because the call requires API 11. And this is an error being thrown by Android Lint. And as I said before, we can actually suppress these calls, suppress these error messages to tell the Android system that we're going to handle these as developers. We're going to make sure that it's, that we're providing some sort of fallback method that's going to work on APIs less than 11. So I'll go ahead and do that now by hitting Control-1 to get the error fixing dialog here. And I'm going to add a suppress lint to the entire class because we, we are going to handle everything within this class. And you'll see it goes up here. We've suppressed lint, and the error goes away. But that doesn't mean that there's the application still won't crash, so we have to handle that now. So now that we've removed all the errors in the application, let's go ahead and run it to see what happens on the varying API level emulators we have here in the lower right. <laughs> 
And as you see, for API 3, it doesn't even get installed. So this is what would happen on the Play Store. It would actively filter your application. Now for API 8, we, the application crashes because we make a call to set Y in the onCreate method, which that's expected behavior right now. But for the device that's running API 11, it works as intended and we can translate the image using the set Y method that we wanted to use. So now that we are no longer going to be using this third emulator, let's just get rid of it. We've specified that our min SDK is 8, so we're going to enforce that. And since we are enforcing that, let's make sure that our application works on API level 8. So right now it doesn't because I have this use workaround set to false. Well, it doesn't for other reasons, but I have implemented a workaround for it, but it's not being used right now. <clears throat> so we'll go ahead and change this to true so that we can showcase how to actually implement a workaround. And you'll see that down here, if we're using the workaround, then this method, which returns a simple boolean called using API 11, will return true if the SDK integer, the API level of the device that the application's running on, is greater than or equal to API 11, which is Honeycomb. And you can find all these integers and numbers on the Android developer site. It's quite available. And also, if you mouse over here, it gives you a general understanding of what the uh, what they mean. So we've checked to see if we're running API 11. And then up here, we actually use this API 11 method in the workaround that I've implemented called translate view. And I've made it its own method because we're not always going to translate the view the same way. We're going to vary how we translate the view based on what API level we're using. So the first and simplest way is to call the setY method. We're going to move on the Y axis. But we only do that if we're using API 11. If this test fails, meaning we're running on an API level which is less than Honeycomb or API 11, then we implement this workaround. You don't really have to worry about the functionality of this for now, and I'm going to attach the source code in the description below so you can inspect it at your own pace. But for now, just know that this implements the same functionality as set Y, but it's, it's compatible on API 8 as well. So if we go ahead and, and run the application now, we're going to see some different functionality. We're going to see that it works on API 8 and API 11 instead of just API 8. So we'll see it loads up on both of them here. And when we click translate image, it translates the Android up and down and the same occurs on API 11. So that's how you handle varying APIs. And there are some cases where you have to handle it programmatically, but it's really quite simple. And that will conclude our deep dive into API level. To quickly recap, we went over what API level is, why we should use it, ways to implement varying APIs in our uh, to align with the decisions that we've made, and we went through a live example of how we actually do this in the real world. So I feel like we've covered all the bases with API level now, and I'd like to thank you for watching and ask if you would Please provide your feedback in the comments below, and if you like the video, please like it. If you want more content, feel free to subscribe. But that's it for now, everyone. I want to thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.